Okay, this is what we got now, or where we will take this video, because now I have made it so that a new apple spawns whenever I eat another one, and for every apple I eat, the snake grows a little bit longer, or exactly one char character longer. Uh, and I think I also added here now, so if I try to move into the snake itself, the apple is eaten, you won. We get the game over screen, I haven't changed that here, so it says the, we like the win text here, but whatever. Uh, pressing a key, it exits. So that's where we will take uh, uh, this video. And I've done a couple of things to, to achieve this. Uh, I refactored uh, the main function quite a bit here now, so now uh, I moved almost everything except the... the key loop which i think we will also move here uh, not in this video but later and the main function is now more just uh, declaration of, of global variables so i moved uh, the the creation of the snake uh, to the play area function where we create the whole play area here i also uh, set up the walls uh, in a special way here so Whatever, let's let's do this together forever. Um, git checkout demo. There, everything magically changed back, and I think it's best to just close all tabs here. So we can start with that uh, refactoring this a bit here. Uh, global variables play area that will uh, uh, be the last thing we do here before the loop and then we these are global variable declarations we move them up here and snake length that's the length of our snake this is by the way how how we left the game now it looks uh, really weird here because we execute play area after all of this is done. Uh, do that here. This is where we left off. So we got the snake and it's moving around. We eat the apple, nothing happens. But we actually added this without testing it in the last video. So I can change here snake length uh, to five. And now we have a longer snake to start with. Um, this is a global config variable, kind of, that I also like to uh, uh, prefix with an underscore and I think we should also change it to a more serious uh, name here. For example, starting length. Like that. can add that up here. Feels like they are somewhat related. Uh, and we got this stuff. And this is what we move into the play area function. So already you can see a lot cle uh, cleaner uh, uh, code here. Play area, but of course uh, play area now, now gets a bit messier instead, but whatever. Uh, and in play area we have this scene uh, text variable containing the first it looks like this then we parse it and, and to get the position of the special uppercase characters here uh, so scene contains yeah the play area here and then we just echo out uh, the scene the last thing we do and here when we print the snake we we populate this op uh, variable here i will also remove this debug uh, stuff here we populate this op variable and then echoes that out uh, together with the apple as well here. But what we actually could do is uh, instead of, of populating the op variable with the snake, we can actually add it to the scene variable. It doesn't really matter. We just save up some some uh, lines and and whatnot, you know. That means we also need to use e here to be sure that it prints the escape codes correctly. Perfect. Then we got the apple stuff there. And the apple stuff will get now get created from a function that we can call uh, new apple. Uh, so let's create that file new apple dot sh. 
new apple there now we got an apple function and a file here and remember the thing we did uh, in the last video uh, so this file will automatically get included in our script here with this little source loop we got uh, so we don't have to do anything else we can just use this function as we are doing here new apple so let's see it should or it will probably not work here because what we do no maybe it works let's see yeah it kind of works uh, but apple is printed at a kind of strange uh, location up here not really sure what's going on apple wow whatever uh, because it doesn't matter we will change all of this uh, uh, anyway because what we want to do is print the apple at a random location yeah now i can see there's something off here with the uh, uh, um, y position somehow whatever because we want to print the apple at a random location in the player play area and every time we eat the apple we will call this function and print it at a new random location uh, but we also have to make sure that we don't uh, create the apple uh, where the snake is you know so we have to keep track of uh, which uh, I like to call it like which cells are occupied and those cells are the snakes uh, the cells containing a snake character uh, because remember the snake grows here uh, and then we can just uh, take a random location and test if this uh, uh, location has a snake if it does then we take a new random location test that and do that till we find a, a vacant uh, location for the apple and um, yeah to find out which uh, uh, cells are occupied we will create a new array here it might look overkill but it, this is actually good i think uh, so we create a new array called uh, underscore g and we should also declare the snake array here up here in the global section uh, and underscore g it will store each uh, uh, cell in our play area that contains uh, uh, a snake character so we have to start here when we create the initial snake uh, and we loop this uh, uh, as many characters as the starting length here that's where we create the snake from the start uh, so and here we store the position uh, that we create because we are gods store that in the snake array remember which we use to move the snake we have to keep track of which uh, the first the head of the snake and the tail of the snake this is a bit different now now we don't care what uh, the head or the tail or whatever is uh, we care about the whole snake and we store that in the g array uh, or we should also do this first p is equal to this so this is the packed uh, coordinates uh, into p store that in snake but in g we do it a bit different we do this instead so g will also be an indexed array where the elements are integers but those integers will actually mean something they will be a position uh, in the play area if you would unpack them uh, and then we just set the value of that uh, element to one like this and we also have to do that in move function same thing here we can store p we can create a local variable first and for foremost and store this thing like that p into snake p into snake i don't know if you can say that on youtube but i just did uh, p into g one uh, but then we also when we uh, pop the tail uh, we also unset that uh, uh, grid element in the g array so something similar to this but here this doesn't work because here p means something completely different and it's almost uh, annoying so i think i will just change it here to i instead because it's actually an index in the array that doesn't mean anything else than that and then we p 
this time is actually the content of that uh, uh, array element index that we are looping. This is what we want to unset here. I'm not sure if you're following, but this is what we are doing. P is equal to S I. There, now this will work and it will unset that G uh, array element. Now when we got all this, um, we can also, um, or we can wait with, with it uh, actually, till we have added the walls. Let's see if it works at all here. Yeah, we got the snake, the apple is at this weird location, I don't know why. Uh, go to new apple. Um, and this is a bit weird now because we have to get a random number and I have I had to write it down here because I always get it wrong um, here's a function random in range uh, or maybe we could uh, call it something easier um, or we can call it random in range uh, it doesn't matter because this uh, let us get a random number in a range. We pass this function here to uh, uh, integers, the min value and the max value, and it will return a value in that range. So if we would pass uh, 5 and 23, we would get a number between 5 and 23, where 5 is the lowest number we could get and 23 the highest. And this is how you how you write it. I, 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 I'm not 100% sure how uh, or why this works. Uh, I found uh, some guides on uh, when I searched for how to do this. Let's see if we can find uh, maybe this. Yeah, here here is one of them to get a number in a range. Uh, I had to do quite some experiments to get this working good, but this works fine. But it is super weird. Um, and the range uh, we want to get here for the x coordinate, and now we can also remove this apple x apple y uh, and create two local variables x y and also p. Always good to have a p, or maybe not. Um, x y x is equal to random in range uh, min value is. Uh, POS starting X and the max value is of course POS and X and then we do the same thing for Y um, and this uh, with these two values we can create uh, a packed coordinate uh, value um, we can store in apple p is equal to here we do one of these uh, x which if 16 to the left and y and now we can just test here if uh, our array g uh, apple p so this coordinate where we want to create this apple, apple p, if that coordinate is already occupied in our g grid array, the play area array, then this test will return true. If it's not set or if the value is zero, this, this test here, because this is just a test, here is a value, is that zero? If not, it's true. That's uh, how this works. Uh, so if it's occupied, uh, then we uh, continue continue what we continue this endless loop that we are actually uh, doing here so while true do this stuff done uh, so this will loop forever uh, or it will loop till it finds a unique uh, uh, apple p position here that is not in the g array uh, then this test will uh, be false and it will not continue uh, and continue on below here instead and all we do really is uh, print this new apple position 
Here we change this to Y and this guy to X, but we still use the Apple uh, uh, variable. And then we break out of the loop. We remove this stuff here. And of course, we didn't have to create this random in range function here. I think I actually have it here. Uh, random in range uh, 15, 29. And there, we got 15 here. But every time we get a different number. <clears throat> Another thing we should do is uh, seed the random environment variable. Because this is a variable, uh, a special... Um, uh, variable that uh, you get a different random uh, integer from every time you, you you call it you know echo random get this number get it it's completely random uh, but it's a good idea to also uh, initiate the random uh, uh, variable with uh, a, a unique uh, and, and as random as possible value as a seed when you start this uh, game here and I like to do that up here with the global variables here random and a common thing is to just use uh, the PID of this uh, uh, process which will be somewhat uh, random we, we can improve this uh, later but for now this is fine okay we got new apple it should print it here I, I'm, I have no idea how this will work now so let's see there, now, now we got the apple up here, which is super strange. Um, and there, now the apple is here. I'm not sure why it, it feels like something, something is off. Um, wonder what's going on. Play area. Ah, uh, maybe it's this. Maybe we should print new apple after we have printed the scene. No, the apple is in, in the play area. And as you can see, we get, get a different location every time. And when I... And now we can easily add um, this uh, spawning of the apple every time we eat it here. We just go into our move function and see where here is when we eat the apple but now also we can improve this test here because now we test both the x and the y position to see if it's apple x or apple y uh, we got now this um, global apple p uh, variable which we should also declare as a global variable in the main function here we can add it here um, so we can actually just test here now if p is equal to apple p, and that's uh, that's quite uh, quite a lot more efficient, you know. It's just one test here, and it's just a boolean test. We don't have to compare if it's more or less or anything. Just see if if this p is equal to this uh, apple p. If it is, we have eaten an apple, and what we do is spawn a new apple. Let's see how this works now. We got this apple here. We eat it. We get a new apple down in the bottom left corner. We eat that guy there. We got a new apple here. Eat that. Eat this. And you see, the game kind of magically works here. We the snake uh, increases in size and the apples are are created randomly and everything. It's really nice. Um, one thing I would like to show you here, uh, because it's kind of easy to, to demonstrate it, uh, how this, uh, what this random seed really means here. If we change this to uh, a number, one, two, three, execute the script, the apple is there. I eat the apple, now the apple is here. Exit out of the script, execute it again. Now, well, okay, I thought we would get uh, the exact same positions, but it... Huh. Because that's the results I got before. Whatever. New Apple. Whatever. Let's set it to the shell. 
the pid i thought the same seed should uh, give us the same random in quotation mark locations but uh, apparently we didn't get that uh, another thing that we can add here because now we saw how beautiful uh, our apple detection is here and then we have this ugly stuff here and all, all, all this does is testing that we are not uh, hitting a wall you know uh, so what we can do is add the walls to our grid array as well uh, and then we can just test if uh, p is equal to a wall if it is then we have hit the wall and also in snake uh, both uh, hitting a wall or hitting the snake itself eating the snake itself or eating a wall will result in death for the snake so it's uh, basically the same thing uh, even if it's uh, completely different you know eating a wall eating a snake it's very different but uh, in this game uh, it is the same thing it, it at least it has the same results uh, so in play area here uh, we also uh, add the walls uh, to the g array and to do that we'll do this because uh, the walls are located above start y and below end y and to the left of start x and to the right of end x and for all lines of course it's you understand what a wall is we can also remove this uh, uh, apple location now we don't need it anymore because we automatically generate it so let's make these walls here we can do it wherever here add walls to g g um, so we want to add uh, walls uh, on the x-axis, uh, we can say for i is equal to uh, pos start x. Uh, and while i is less than or equal to pos end x. Uh, I plus plus do done so here we increment I which will be an X position uh, inserting walls above or and below uh, uh, the grid so the the Y positions are fixed <clears throat> and I guess we can store them uh, temporarily here declare i i and then wall x1 wall x2 wall y1 wall y2 uh, or whatever um, wall y1 is equal to uh, pos start y minus 1 that's uh, one cell above uh, uh, start y, meaning here, or here, or here, or here, because it's just a y uh, uh, coordinate. And we do the same with two, y two, but that is one uh, cell below uh, end y, e y. And then we do the same for x, of course, here. x x uh, and we can also do this so it doesn't get so cluttered there now we got four fixed uh, variables with fixed positions here uh, and now we just uh, add to the grid A number here that looks like uh, I shifted 16 bits to the left packed with W I 1 we set that to 1 then we do the same for W Y 2 and here we add both the, the roof and the floor so to speak of the walls uh, then we do the same for the x location it's almost exactly the same you know 
And maybe there is a smarter way to do this, but uh, it's kind of convenient to do, the, do it this way. Wall x1, wall x2, and now the uh, g the g array here, and, and this is it might look like this is a lot of work, you know, and it should be bloated and slow things down, but it really doesn't, you know, it all depends on how big the grid is. But even if the grid would be like 100 uh, numbers, this would be extremely fast. We just set uh, a, an index in this array to one and pack this number, it's it's uh, super duper fast, don't worry. Uh, if we run the game, we shouldn't see any difference at all here. It just looks uh, as before. But now we actually have the walls in, in the G array. And that means we can clean up this uh, thing here. And this thing, look at it, can be written like this. If P is equal to... No, we can even do this. If, if G, P. There. That's the same thing as this so let's do that g p uh, and i also like to keep this as a if else here I like to do that when when uh, you got a lot of lot of stuff you know it's uh, and yeah and for other reasons as well if if this uh, new position we want to move to is in the g array that means we are we we have hit the wall and then we can do game over else we advance uh, the snake here and we just change this to a five and now this also this works both for walls and for the snake itself if we wouldn't have done this then we would have needed to add a, a lot of more tests there uh, with this long list of, of tests to see that we were not hitting a wall, we also needed to hit add tests to see that we didn't hit a snake. This does all of that, just these uh, four characters, or five. If I hit the wall, the apple is hitting you one. We should change the text. It's driving me a bit insane here. Game over. Going into the snake itself, game over. Eating the apple, growing, getting another apple. Come on, do it. No, I hit the game over. The game is starting to become a game. Um, next video i would like to add some some points and stuff you know so for every apple we eat we should uh, get some points and maybe you also add like a high score thing uh, i think we can do that in the next video that will be kind of comfy and uh, easy easy peasy business all right thank you for watching everybody have a great day bye